Mm. Okay. So uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the gift of life that we can meet together and we can study your word. And we see that Numbers is a big part of that. We seen that it was 120 years before the flood occurred that there was a warning given. We see that these here numbers being uh, replicated in, in other places in history. And uh, we're seeking to apply line upon line and to understand these things. And you've given the number 666, and we want to look at that number as well in spans of time that we've seen and witnesses to um, your hand in, this, in, in the history. And we ask your blessing upon this, your study. Help us to comprehend it. And uh, be blessed. Bless those who are listening. And uh, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so this is uh, my ninth presentation. Um, we finished off looking at the time considerations in the book of Samuel, and, or sorry, not the, the book of Samuel, but uh, concerning the Samuel the judge and the Philistines. There's a period there of, of 18 years and 40 years. And um, we're just going to continue on, just finishing off really the, the book of Judges, just a little bit to finish off. Um, the following diagrams uh, propose scenarios and their consequences. So this one I had drawn on the board. Uh, we have here the 18 years of Philistine oppression lined up with the uh, 40 years. And Samson is born early in that time period. And so he would judge nearly towards the end because I'm applying the time when God thunders and sort of disperses the Philistines and the Israelites then pursue after them, have a, a great victory, which then ends that time of Philistine oppression. And it's brought to view in 1 Samuel chapter 7. And um, there's a 20-year period mentioned there as well. So I, I believe that would take it towards the end of this 20-year period. So Samson is uh, judging uh, just before uh, the end of that, is uh, when he destroys the temple of Dagon and dies. But for this to be sort of aligned with the 300 years that uh, Ellen White mentions uh, concerning the Ark being at Shiloh, that would have to be rounded down by five years. Another scenario here is uh, that these 40 years of oppression occur after Jephthah and are separate from the 18 years. For this, the, the, the 300 years of the Argus Shadow then would have to be rounded down by 19 years in that scenario. And then if you're going to apply the Philistine oppression as to occurring after Abdon and Samson being born then, uh, Ellen White's 300 years of the Argus Shadow would have to be rounded down by uh, 44 years. So the difficulties encountered in aligning the spans of 300 years, sorry, the difficulties encountered in aligning the spans of the 300 years with the years assigned to the periods of oppression would lead to the, to the conclusion that at least one of those, one of the spans has been rounded off to the nearest one hundredth of a year, while we can but approximate, uh, while we can but approximately date events, structures can be identified that a more constrained chronology would not validate. So I'm just saying there, things are a bit vague in uh, the Book of Judges um, to some level, but that can then allow some creativity to some degree um, 
And in this here, I have a 187 year structure. So from Ehud to Gideon, if you add up the years in between, um, it comes to 187. And then we can identify 66 years on either side, from Cushion Rishathaim to Eglon, and then from Abimelech to the 18 years of the Philistine and Ammon oppression. And I'm following there the six years of Jephthah that come after that as a judge, and then I'm applying the 40 years of Philistine oppression coming after um, the six years of Jephthah. And there the Lord thunders, as recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 10. And there's 300 years going back, as then identified from this year point. And then, as a mirror of that, we have the six years taking the land. Now, I know that Joshua and the elders continued after that time for a period, but it's not given. And so, therefore, I'm just saying, just taking with what the numbers that we are given, and we can apply 300 years of the Ark of Shiloh going forward at the beginning of them, at the end of them six years. And then prior to that, there was the 40 years wilderness wandering. And that began with the Lord thundering from Mount Sinai. So you have thunders at either side of that structure. Okay. So this, this is kind of, I'm not really familiar with this. So, so this is in First Samuel chapter 7. Right, mm -hmm. um, and so this is uh, seven verse ten, yes, which is interesting symbol. Mm -hmm. um, but it says, yeah, the but the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them, and they were they were smitten before Israel. So you're saying this is the end of the Philistines? Is that until you get to s that was the end of their oppression? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's Because then Samuel does a circuit and they don't, there's like a period where there's kind of, uh, I think she says like an agreement at some level, a covenant with the Philistines or yeah. something, or some level of... So Samson would have died a little while before this, in, the, in this case? No, 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 this is just, this is actually where he begins to judge. This, oh, this is where Samson begins? Yes. Okay. Okay, that's what I wasn't clear about. Yeah, because I didn't look at this. Uh, in, in studying the judges, I never looked at Samuel yet. Mm -hmm. um, now, just a question here. So what we're doing here with this line, this is saying this isn't the actual chronology. This is just using those periods that are given and dividing it up in this way, right? Because we got the yeah. 80 years for Ehud, which yes. would overlap. Just taking what was given. Yeah. And, um, but we do, we do have, uh, just going back to what you were talking about with the other chronology, that 300 years, it could be rounded off, like dwelling at Heshbon and Aurora, right? But Ellen White uses a 300-year period, which could just sort of be using that as a, a model, that it's about that time, right? She could be just doing that, or she could be being specific. But I would think that that 300, it fits well, with what we have, that we can mark it at the beginning of Jephthah. So that seems to be accurate in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so we have two periods of 66 years, and uh, I'll be dealing with 666 uh, a bit later. So the earlier judges is the title of chapter 53 of Patriarchs and Prophets, which covers the time from the conquest of the land when the Israelites had stalled in removing the idolatrous inhabitants from among them unto Jephthah, a period close to 300 years. Therefore, Ibsan, Elon, Abdon, Samson, Eli, and Samuel could be classed as the later judges, although Eli could have judged during the time of Jephthah and even a portion prior to, to Jephthah's time. So, <coughs> So her chronological comments do not imply any overlap in the spans of time from the 20 years of oppression under, under Jabin until Jair. So, um, 
So just moving on to 666, so we're familiar with this here number in Revelation 13. Uh, we also are aware of Nebuchadnezzar in chapter 3 setting up an image in the plain of Jura, which is 60 cubits by 6 cubits. And Goliath is mentioned as being 6 cubits in height plus a span, and he has a sword which is 600 shekels. And there's a giant as well associated, I think, with uh, Gath as well. And uh, he has six toes and six fingers in each hand and each foot. So this is uh, relating to what was said earlier. And uh, I believe Dwight had touched on the year 158. And Theodore had touched on the, uh, that year as well with William Miller's application. William Miller had an application of 666 years from 158 BC to 508. And then we have a period of 1335 years till 1843. And uh, William Miller said that the Romans became connected with the Jews by league. This may be found in the first book of Maccabees, 8th and 9th chapters. Also in the history of Josephus, Roland's ancient history, etc. When the Grecians ceased to rule over the Jews, and the last monarchy in Daniel's vision began. This was 158 years before the birth of Christ and 2,000 years before the second advent of Christ. For by adding 158 plus 1842 equals 2,000 years or two days. Again, if pagan Rome was to continue, as I have proved in a former lecture, one, on that point, 666 years, and Daniel is to stand on his lot at the end of 1335 years from the taking away the pagan mode of worship. And then he mentions, references um, Daniel 12, verses 12 to 13. Then add 666 plus 1335 equals 2001, which would carry us one year into the 3000 or to the year 1843, after Christ. And Hosea says, after two days, that is, after 2,000 years, he will revive us. And in the third day, that is, the third thousandth year, which will begin in the year 1, 1843, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. So he wrote that in 1842. So it's interesting there, he mentions 2001. The Romans became directly connected with the people of God by the Jewish League, BC 161. That's uh, Uriah Smith commentating. So quite similar to uh, what William Miller says, but he says, he relates it to the, the Grecians ceased to rule over the Jews. And that occurred about three years after the actual league occurring. So in a sense, they're not uh, contradictory, but they're both valid uh, dates. And we had mentioned a period of 1335 years going back from, from 158 BC. That takes us to 1493 BC, and as identified there was a league with the Gibeonites, and that league was made actually, actually three days before they actually discovered that they had um, like scammed, mm -hmm. lied to them. Mm -hmm. So we read about that in Joshua chapter 9, verses 15 to 17, and Joshua made a league to let them live. And at the end of three days they heard that they dwelt among them, and the children of Israel journeyed and came unto their cities on the third day. So that connects 1335 years later to a three-year period. So then three days seem to connect with them three years with the league with Rome. What occurred in 161. 
and the, the space between 161 and, and 1493 BC is 666 times 2. And then from 158, we can calculate 2001 years inclusive. That will take us to 1843, so that was the one William Miller was talking about. And uh, from 508, which Miller had calculated the 66 years ending, we can count another 666 years times 2. Uh, it will take us to 1840 AD. And you have there the fulfillment of the 391 years and 15 days prophecy of Revelation 9. You can then calculate 161 years to 2001 AD. And from 1843, you can count 158 years. And from 508, you can also calculate 1493 years, which connects with uh, this here date here. So we have a date and a span sort of correlation in all these here structures. And Usher, there's a 1335 there I noticed in him. With him, I'll just uh, use the whiteboard. It's not very good. Is there another one? So we already had said that Usher died in the year 1656 AD. And this was in a span, the time from creation to the flood. And the chronology, we've, we've come to understand that creation began in the year 40, 46 BC. And Usher, he um, was 75 years old when he died, and two months and 17 days. And the flood occurred after a seven-day period when the door was shut. And five years prior to that, Lamech had died. So you can identify a 75 there. And the flood actually occurred on the second month, on the 17th, the 17th day, which connects with uh, the two months and 17 days when Usher died. And this here date was 2390 BC. If you just take 156, 165, 1656 from 4046. And this span of time then would be an inclusive count 4046 years. And um, the date that Usher actually died was the 21st of March. So that's the, the equinox. And that made me think of the of, um, well, first things, the, the end of the 1335 years. And um, the original date that William Miller had was the 21st of March. Well, it ended in 1844, but it was really the end of the year 1843. Um, and I think he had it from the 21st of March, 1843 to 21st of March, 1844 was when... Yep, that's how But certainly, the, he's seen that the, the, from 508, he had identified that the, the 1335 
had was going to finish on this year date. And um, the 21st of March also made me think, you could write it as uh, 3, 2, 1. So I was going to convert that to the, to the year 321. AD, and that was the year of the Sunday Law of Constantine. And that was 1335 years then to when Asher died. And when did, was it Asher born? 1581, I think. What date? Um, not sure, I'll have to look it up. Okay. So we had identified from Usher, from his death, it was going to be 187 years to March, 21st of March, 1843. And then it's a hundred and, well, it's kind of, let me put that in the wrong place, but. So you had uh, 187 years as well to 508, and then there's the 1335 to uh, 1843 occurring. So uh, just um, could have done that diagram better, but <laughs> you maybe get the idea. So. There was also uh, a period of 666 years, or sorry, um, I'll do this. So Miller, from 158 to 508, had these 666 years as an inclusive count, and then 1335 years took us to 1843. Now, um, these here two charts, or sorry, not the two charts, just this particular chart here, the 1843 chart. Um, Leroy Froome says uh, there were 300 of them printed. And these charts were not used in the seventh month movement. The Jewish year, 1843, 1843 had transpired in April 1844. And we understand that more specifically, the last day of the, the biblical calendar uh, year 1843 was April 18. And you can count 666 days back to when the chart was initially publicized in June the 22nd, 1842. There is a quote there from the Signs of the Times concerning the chart. Says the chronological chart of the visions of Daniel and John is now nearly finished and will be ready for delivery in a few days. Mentions the price and the publishers and uh, so forth. So you have there from the ends in this here point, 1843. You can identify a period of 666 days when the, the chart was advertised anyway. I don't think it was too long after that. There was a camp meeting. And but it's June 22nd, which is... Yes. <laughs> and um, another diagram there. Just sort of same idea, but just a, a different sort of um, emphasis. So in 1843, there was a conquest of Canaan, and in a sense that paganism began to be taken away from the Promised Land. And the children of Israel crossed the River Jordan, and they circumcised themselves on that day that they uh, went through that Jordan. So you have, in a sense, a symbol there of baptism. And then 2001 years later, inclusive counting, you have 508 AD, and paganism is being taken away, and you have a baptism of Clovis taking place. And 
Then you can count 1,493 years, the date of the conquest of Canaan, to 2001 AD. And we've identified 9-11 with, the symbolic, uh, with a, like a symbolic baptism. Ellen White's statement mentions that the, in connection with uh, the buildings of Great New, New uh, the building, the great buildings of New York City falling down, that uh, Revelation 18 angel uh, is there's some fulfilment there concerning that. And um, I've sort of uh, in this year alignment, I've seen that there are 30 years here, from 508 to 538 where we have like a Sunday law in the beginning of the 1260 years. As this, in this year's structure, I sort of thought this could be justification for Joshua, also ruling for a period of 30 years after 1493 BC. And at the end of that, you have 70 kings who have their toes and thumbs, great toes and thumbs uh, cut off. So, and there you have a period of 1260 beginning. And Ellen White, she compares the 1260 to the 70 years of Babylon. So you have that 1260 sort of connected to the year 70 as well. So and we also know that 18 times 70 is 1260. So Theodore had previously mentioned this year period of 666 years from when uh, Jehoiachin was uh, put into captivity. And then there's a 36 year period from when he's released. And this is uh, mirrored at the end of the 666 years with the destruction of Jerusalem. And the 36 years prior to that being the end of probation for the Jewish nation. And he identified the magic square, if you add up six times six and like square boxes, you get the number 666. And also, he also mentioned that the uh, Jehoiachin was uh, taken captive. Well, what it, sorry, he was sort of released from captive, it says there in Jeremiah 52, verse 31. And it came to pass in this 37th year of the captivity of Jehoiachin, king of Judah, in the twelfth month, in the twenty-fifth day of the month, that evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the first year of his reign, lifted up the head of Jehoiachin, king of Judah, and brought him forth out of prison. So if we combine 1225 for the twelfth month and the twenty-fifth day, we have the number uh, 225, and that's actually <coughs> quite one, similar. 1225. Sorry, yeah, 1225. One, and that's uh, the total that you'll get if you have a magic square of, uh, of seven. Um, it's actually, we'll work out, you know, so it's seven times seven would be 49 squares. Yeah. And each, e each square will uh, add up, well, each sort of um, seven squares will add up to 175. So you just, seven times 175 is 1225. <clears throat> so you have maybe a connection there to that, um, to that 666 in the magic square calculation. Uh, another point I'd just like to bring out is that the siege of Jerusalem and well, the reign, the captivity that Ezekiel is referring to in 592 BC, in the 21st of July, where he begins to prophesy. That is, uh, there's a connection between this here date and the actual date that uh, Jehoiachin is taken captive. So Jehoiachin is taken captive in March 16. Oh, 597 BC. 
and Ezekiel, he's prophesying on the 21st of July, 592. And he begins to prophesy in the fifth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month. And there you see the difference between March 16th, 597 BC, when Jehoiachin is taken captive, and July 21st, 592. There's a period of five years, four months, and five days in the actual count of the group, uh, well, the Julian calendar. So it would likely be quite near, but it, I didn't expect it to be just exactly <laughs> that exact period which connects with the, the date of Ezekiel 1, 1, verse 1. And uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verse 9, talks about uh, Jehoiachin. Okay, so just to step back. So one is you need to take a little bit more time to just let these things sink in. So we looked at the period of time to the day from when Jehoiachin was taken captive to the day that he has his first vision. And it's five years, four months, and five days. And that, of course, hits in the fifth year, the fourth month of the fifth day. Right? Fifth day of the fourth month of the fifth year. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not very likely. I mean, you can say, well, it says five years, so you can kind of discount that. But, you know, it's not the same period of time. It's not like we're starting on January 1st here. Mm -hmm. Right? So, it's kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, um, moving on, just bringing a point here about Jehoiachin. It says in 2 Chronicles, chapter 36, verse 9, that he was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. So, prophetically, we can take three months as 90 days, plus 10 is 100 days, and 100 days is 144,000 minutes. And I'm just highlight highlighting there the number 369, because that's also what the nine squares of, it's nine by nine, so each column of a, a magic square nine by nine would equate to 369 as well. So just, yes. So just a, a point there. Um, so I have here from that date, date that we mentioned, March 16, 597 BC. Um, and I've, I've, I've just gone by what the, the calendar converter says. I know you say it's the 6th of August for the destruction of the temple, mm -hmm. which is, would be the 10th day of the 5th month mm -hmm. in AD 70, okay, which is 666 years later. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that it's not just um, any period afterwards, it's a mm -hmm. period of 666 years and 144 days. Now, you, if you're going to argue it's going to be the 6th of August, you could say, well, inclusive. It's, and you could say inclusive. So it still works. So you have 144,000 minutes in the sense at the start of that, 666. And then you can identify 144 days mm -hmm. at the end of that period as well. Now you had, you had a number there, 7996. You didn't pay any attention to that. So you Where just have that? it there just because it did it, but you didn't. Where is this? Seven, seven, nine, nine, six months. The number of months. Right? Mm -hmm. So you didn't really pay attention to that or the number of weeks. You haven't done anything with that. No. Or the two, four, three, four. Because I've, I've seen these numbers before when we were doing the Book of Judges. Okay. Um, so it's just kind of interesting. Um, I had noted, well... I thought it was interesting that it just came to exactly 279 weeks, the previous one. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, I'm not too sure. I haven't just thought it's interesting, mm -hmm. but I haven't uh, thought more about it. And so this here diagram here talks about 37 years and 73 years. So from the birth of Christ is 37 years to the close of probation in AD 34. And then it would be 73 years to the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70. And we have there a period of 37 years followed by a period of 36 years. And in Gematria, the first nine Jewish letters are calculated, are assigned a number, one to nine. The following nine, it's uh, to the power of 10, so 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. And then the last four letters are assigned a letters to the power of 100. And um, in the Hebrew dates are generally written using gematria. For example, Genesis 1.1 1, 1 would be recorded as Genesis AA if you're writing it in the Hebrew. Alpha, alpha, alpha. Whatever. Yeah, alpha. Yes. So Genesis 1.1 1, 1 is composed of seven words and 23 letters, which is a perfect number. So they're quite rare, perfect numbers. So what that perfect number is, is the number of divisors. For, so in the 28, you'll have 1, 2, 4, 7, and 14. And if you add them up, it gives you the number 28. So it matches the number um, that you're identifying. Um, it is also the 70, 70th triangular number. So the, sorry, the seventh triangular number. Uh, the first three words contain 14 letters, and the last four words constitute the last 14. Uh, the words God, heaven, and earth contain 14 letters, and their gematria adds up to 777. It is only verb, its only verb is a multiple of seven, so that would be um, created. Created, yes, which is, is it two, three? Uh, 200 right. plus two plus one? What do you two, 203, out? I think it is, yeah. So anyway, just there's lots of things connected with seven there. So um, the Hebrew numerical added word value of this verse is 2,701. So you add up all them numbers, it gives you 2,701. And the only way this is uh, divided, that has multiples, is by 37 times 73. So this connects with that 37 years and the 73 years in the time of Christ. Uh, these numbers together would, if you put them together, it's 3773. And this is, uh, can be attained by multiplying 7 times 7 times 77. 73 is a 37th odd number. And um, 2,701 is the 73rd triangular number and the 37th hexagonal number. 37 is the 12th prime number, and 73 is the 21st prime number. So then numbers uh, form a mirror, if you put them together, 12, 21. And I was just thinking about what Jennifer was saying. Uh, she added 9, 11, 119, and 191 to get 1, 2, 2, 1. And 12 cubed is 144, and 21 cubed is 440, 441. And these numbers together form a mirror, uh, 1, 4, 4, 4, 4, 1. And 201, sorry, 2,701 mirrored is 1,072, and that mirrored, uh, that added with 2701 is, takes us back to 3773. So Did you find that all out? No, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, because I've seen these things before. Yeah, yeah, this is quite common. There's a whole website that just focuses itself on Genesis 1-1, mm -hmm. just the numeric 
connections. So we've already identified um, from 1798 to 1989. There's this here, 191. That takes us to 1989. And we have there the 11.9. And then 12 years later, we have 9.11. So that's sort of like, you could reverse that again and add the 221, you know, remember it. <laughs> you know, you sort of connect that to what these here all add up to. Mm -hmm. And uh, this. No, that wasn't in, in a book before. No. That's just Jennifer. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the mathematician here. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have here the 70 week prophecy and something what Dwight was talking about. Um, 191 BC being in the center. And then you can count 126 years to 65 BC. And uh, this is when Rome conquers the east, Syria, the pleasant land being Judah, and the south being Egypt. You read about that in Daniel 8 verse 9. And this is what Jeff used, it, that when Rome begins its dominion of the earth, its conquering of the world, it first takes three geographical areas. And from 1798 to the 7th Adventist Church being formed, we have a period of 65 years, which connects with that uh, 65 uh, BC. And then from the church being formed, you have 126 years to the time of the end in 1989. And that connects, uh, that 126 years connects with this span from the midpoint. 265 BC, and from 1989, Rome conquers the king of the south, USSR, and then we can expect the other geographical areas that are brought to view in Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45, the glorious land being the USA at the National Sunday Law, and then, um, so that would be the close of preparation for the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and then Egypt, the universal Sunday Law, and the close of preparation for the world. And um, yeah, so you also had 1260 years prior to 1798 identified in this diagram. And that's when Rome plucks up three Gothic tribes before it reigns, reign, um, reigns supremely for them 1260 years. So going back to the 37 and 73, now I came out in that 2666. So from 4 BC, 37 years to 34 AD, and then 36 years to 70 AD. So we have this here, 37 years seen in the 37th year of Jehoiachin, and 36 years we already connected that. And then the, what also is brought to view here is the 12th day, sorry, the 25th day of the 12th month for Jehoiachin. So beginning in, in 4 BC, it's the traditional date of the birth of Christ is the 25th day of the 12th month. Now we know that's not uh, actual, traditional date, but I'm just putting it in there as a symbol. And the 666 years can be expressed as 6, six, sorry, six plus 6 plus 6 times 37. So it sort of connects to them numbers. And then the Sunday Law in 321 AD, we identified from the decree of Artaxerxes in 457, a period of 777 years to 321. And the first Sunday law occurred on March the 7th that year. So you have there an assemble the seventh day of the third month. But there was also another secondary Sunday law on the 3rd of July that year. So there you have third day of the seventh month. So you have a 73 and a 37 being seen in them numbers. And then um, the find here 
a period of 1,533 days can be attained by multiplying 7 times 3 times 73. And then from November 1989 to the 25th of December 2001, a period of 777 days can be attained by 3 times 7 times 37. So, and just sort of, you can have it, and just sort of, this is about creativity, you know, 7 times 3 is 21, and 3 times 7 is 21, but it just sort of matches, you could just say 21 times 73, but I'm just sort of taking them numbers and making a pattern out of it. Now, William Foy, he uh, had his first vision. The sixth angel has not yet done sounding on the 18th of January, 1842. And that was uh, 525 days into the 1533 period. And then you have four times 252, or 144 weeks, to the October 22nd, 1844, when the, the sixth angel would finish its sounding, and the seventh angel would then begin. And November 9th, sorry, yeah, November the 9th, 2019, we've identified 252 days to July 18, and then 525 days to December 25th. And it's just sort of lining up, then you can add uh, that period of 525 to this period of 252 times 4 to get the number 1533. And here you can have, uh, combine the two, 525 days to the 252 to get 777. And then this is lined up slightly differently. So there was a prediction concerning Islam on the 11th of August 1840 and then July 18, 2020. And thereafter was a period of 525 days. And then we had the vision of William Floyd, the sixth angel hath not yet done sounding on the 18th of January 1842. And then at the, from the 18th of July 2020, we have a presentation by Colin Joseph, the sixth king, talking about Trump, and the other has not yet come. He was referring to Biden, and that was done on the 25th of December, uh, 2021. Uh, the years between the beginning of the 666 and the 777 year spans, plus, okay, so this year is 666 years from the captivity of Joachim to the destruction of Jerusalem. We've mentioned that before. But if you combine that with the Artaxerxes decree and the 777 years to the Sunday law in 321, you have between them a period of 140 years on this side and 251 years on this side. And combined, you have the number 391 if you add them both together. And then I've identified a period of 666 years in the, in the pre-flood period. And that's all centered on the midpoint of the arc of the, cons of the construction of the arc. And um, that's actually not the midpoint there, but it's actually here. <laughs> um, so that would have been 2450 BC. On either side of that, you have a period of 60 years. And that will take you to when Noah was age 600. And prior to that was 606 years to when Adam died. And uh, Noah, at that their time, was 504 year, um, 540 years old at that, th that time, the midpoint. So that sort of connects with the fifth day of the fourth month and 1844 in the, in the symbols. And what's also interesting is the 666th prime number and the, and the 777th prime number. Uh, the difference between them is 930, and that would uh, take you back to the time before them 666 years began um, to the sixth day when Adam was created. I've identified. Okay, so uh, 
So from when Adam dies, it's 666 years to the midpoint of when the ark was constructed. And I've turned this here period of two, well, William Miller had identified the Great Jubilee from 607 BC to 1843 initially. And uh, from the midpoint of the art construction, being also as a date, 2450 BC. From that point, it's 1844 years, an inclusive count to when the Babylonian captivity begins. And from when that midpoint occurs, Noah there I've identified is 540 as a symbol of the fifth day of the fourth month. And in 1844 there you have the fifth day of the fourth month in the sort of center of two periods of 93 days. And the, the, the 93 days then sort of can connect then to, the, to when the ark began in the uh, 607th year since Adam's death, age 930. So, um, the 607th year when the ark began since Adam died, you can then connect to 607 BC. Or you could just take the 607 as an inclusive count. And there, I'm just identifying the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the Ark of his Testament. So you have the Ark of the Covenant being identified, and this is uh, concerning the Ark of Noah and the boat. So two arks. So this, here, this one here is not so much to do with 666, but uh, just adding it in. So from creation, there's a period of 600... 1656 years, which is 46 times 36, to the flood, and then it was from from the flood, it's 17, 1798 years, to when Ezekiel has that vision on the 21st day, so, oh, sorry, on the 21st of July, 592 BC, on the fifth day of the fourth month, and then it's 2390 years, inclusive count, to 1798, the time of the end. And that can be followed by a period of 46 years, or in prophetic terms, times 360. It gives us a number which relates to the number of years prior to the flood. And I'm just highlighting there that fifth day, the fourth month, being emphasized in 1844 as well, as well as the shut door here, sort of connecting with the shut door of the flood in uh, 2390 BC. This one here connects um, 720, 781 BC as a midpoint. So you have here the seventh from Adam, being Enoch, being born, and then you have 65 years to when Methuselah is born, and then 187 years to when Lamech is born, and from then it's uh, to the flood, it's 781 years exclusive reckoning to 2390 BC. And Lamech dies 777 years later. Now, 781 BC is the midpoint between them and the King James Bible in 1611. So you have 2390 years either side in an exclusive count. And then you're counting 187 years to the time of the end, followed by 65 years to when the Seventh-day Adventist Church is formed. So you have here the Seventh of Adam connects with the Seventh-day Adventist Church being formed to 65 years here to there, 187 years uh, to there. And then they sort of connect. And then from that midpoint, we can identify 777 years uh, to the birth of Christ in 4 BC from that midpoint. So we have that July 18 symbol in a reverse form in that structure. 
and just when Enoch was born, if you add up the, the ages of the patriarchs prior to him, which would include Adam and to Jared, it comes to a period symbolizing, we have the numbers there for July 18, so 2, 1, 8, 7. This one here we've looked at previously, just touching on it, from the time, first biblical time prophecy to when that's given, 120 years, that particular date, taking, um, if you take away 1844, which is the end of prophetic time, gives us the number 666. We also looked at this one here, the Sunday Law of Constantine, to when the daily was taken away, connected to the 25th of December, and Clovis is being baptized, is 187, and then it's 479 years to when Charlemagne was crowned on the 25th of December as well. So if you add 187 to 279, gives us the number 666. And then if you wanted the R321, it gives us the number 1629, the date that Odilio um, had emphasized. So um, time-wise, coming quite near the end, or maybe mm -hmm. just, yes. This, I don't think this here has been presented before. This is concerning the, um, the altar mm -hmm. of Ezekiel, and it takes a bit of time, so I'm not going to go into it, so I can discuss that in another future time. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks for your helping us, your mercy, your love for us, and we desire to represent you in this year earth. And we desire your Holy Spirit to help us in all the challenges that we face. And that uh, we can trust you with our lives. We give thanks for that great sacrifice of Christ on the, on the cross for us. That uh, gives us forgiveness of our sins. And uh, if we confess them and forsake them. And we, we do that now, this year time, and seek to please you in all that we do and say. And Father, we ask your assistance in helping Theodore present the next lesson, and the lesson after that, I believe he has two lessons this evening. May we be blessed with the word of life from uh, the words that you've given him. And uh, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.